Bibles this morning. Grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of 2 Timothy. I appreciate it. Go sign your faith on this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Salamat sa among mga bisita po. Ali pa ni na modere. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 this morning. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, 25, 26. English, una vasai kaduha. Kunana, say amen. Amen. Tanaman ingo, palo, paras pagbasa, palo sa Joseph. Everyone standing for the reading of the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 24, 25, and 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Notice that phrase. Instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Verse 24, Apan magmalumo ngako sa tanan mga tao, andam sa pagtudlo, mapailubon. Diha sa kaaghob, nagatudlo ni atong mga nakiksumpaki sa ilang mga kaugalingon. Basin ko ng Diyos, muhata kanila o paghinusol ngato sa pagpangila, o sa pagila sa kamatuuran. O karon ilang mapalingkawas ang ilang mga kaugalingon gikan sa lit litag sa yawa kinsa gipang bihag niya sa iyang kabuton. That my message this morning is when you become your own enemy. Konikaw mahimong Imong kaugalingon kaaway. Some of you are looking at me like, Pastor Mike, you are crazy. No one is their own enemy. Oh, yes, many people are their own enemy. Ah, ang tao ang ilang kaugalingon. We say in English, you are your own worst enemy. Tell me my message when you become your own enemy. Gillette, I'm going to use you this morning. I don't normally do something like this on a Sunday morning, but I want these notes on the board. So I'm going to put you up here if you could help me. I'll give it to you because they're long. Don't study my sermon in advance, okay? So you see me reading the outline saying, Ooh, Pastor Mike, that's dumb. Hey, don't do that. Put this up right here. Mga kapunat ta, dahil yung kumumaka lingkod. Ako magwalik ninyo yung daily father. Thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray, God, that you... Fill me with your spirit as I preach this morning. God, thank you for very clearly laying this message on my heart Friday evening. Now, God, would you help me to deliver it? Lord, you help me to prepare it. Now I need you to help me to, to give it to our people. Please, God, fill me with your spirit. Please empower me. Help me to say exactly what our people need to hear this morning. God, would you help someone this morning to escape the snare of the devil? We've been taken captive. Dear God, would you please, please, God, bless the message. I beg you, Father, show up this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friendly fire. Kinta kabalo sa pulong, friendly fire. Sapta ninyo ka na? Diya sa gubat, sa war. What is friendly fire? Friendly fire is when you accidentally kill soldiers from your own army. Kung ikaw, masayop sa imong pagpusil, sa imong mga bombs, o magpatay ka sa imong kaugaling, o magsakit ka sa imong kaugaling, o mga sundalo. Friendly fire is an 
unfortunate but very real situation in any war. Bisan unsan luba na ay usahay na ay friendly fire. I heard a true story about a platoon of American soldiers in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. That would have been back in the 1960s. Yes, the 1960s. Na Americano mga mga sundalo. A platoon is probably 10 to 15 men. There may have been more, but I know it's at least one platoon. Ognasila dito sa Vietnam, fighting there in the jungles or uh, uh, on the hills there of Vietnam, and nagakita sila sa mga uh, airplanes mag fly ibabaw kanila. Now, when you're on the ground and you see your airplanes fly over, that's always encouraging. Ma encourage you ka. Tungon kumukita sa imong ka wala mga airplane ka balo ka delit delit kita ra. We nami mga tabang dito sa ibabaw. Isa ibabaw. We have help above and and mga nami tabang is ma ah ah sila mo tabang na mo sa guba. So I'm sure when the soldiers looked up and saw their own aircraft na lipay sila. Until the airplanes started dropping bombs on them. Ang mga airplanes nag start, nag drop, nag open sa bomb doors, sa doors sa bomb bay. The bombs began to fall. They were napalm. Kapalo mo kung sa napalm. Napalm was a sticky. What is sticky? Tap, makatap, tapok, matap. What? Matapot. Sapok. It's like glue, but it burns. And it sticks to everything. So when you drop napalm on the en on the enemy, that sticky substance, the napalm, sticks on everything and then masunog jud. So if it splatters on you, masunog jud ka. And these soldiers saw the napalm bombs falling and they screamed at the skies, It's us, you fools! Go, Banda! They were killed by their own friends in the sky. Friendly fire. Friendly fire. Nyagin Friday, Naglakauko, Nagasturis, the Josai, took a walk around the neighborhood to talk to God. And, um,. I was walking down the street, heading towards the Bakayan's house, and God reminded me of this verse. Just bang, just popped into my head. I read this book. This I read Second Timothy two or three weeks ago, I think. Dugay na nagbasko sa Second Timothy, but sa kalit lang. I mean, this verse just God put it in my mind. No question about it. By the way, that's why preachers need to read the Bible a lot. Anybody who teaches Sunday school, you need to read the Bible a lot because God needs to be able to remind you of something you know. He can't remind you of something if you don't know it. So I pulled my phone out and I and I looked up the verse and I started studying these verses. Do you still have your Bible? Look at verse 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may, I'm sorry, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Bisaya. Di hasa ka agho, nagatudlo ni atong mga nakiksumpaki sa ilang mga kaugalingon. Nasapta ni yung nakiksumpaki. Is that like, I don't know how to say that in English exactly. I mean, I know the English is oppose, but it means... Become your own enemy. Diba? Magpatok sa iyong kaugalingon. Niya itong mga nakiksumpaki sa ilang mga kaugalingon, pasin ko ng Diyos, mohata ka nila, o paghinulso, nga ito sa pag-ilas, sa kamatuoran, o garoon ilang mapalingkawa sa ilang mga kaugalingon, gikasalit ag sa yawa, kinsa gipang bihag niya sa iyang kabuton. But I want you to notice that phrase, Instructing those that oppose themselves. Nagatudlo, I'll read that in the sign, make sure I get it right. Nagatudlo ni atong mga nakiksumpaki sa ilang mga kaugalingon. What God is saying in this verse, it is possible for you to commit friendly fire against yourself. Mahimong, ay ka, mahimong friendly fire patok sa'y 
mungkin kelingut. It is possible for you to become your own enemy. Mahimong ay ka, mahimong i mong kawalingon kaaway. An enemy is someone who desires to hurt you or regularly does things that hurt you. Panaglitan. If you are walking down the street and all of a sudden a hammer, now I hope that Brother Michael made these hammers for our conference, the Tools of the Trade. This is not a real hammer, in case you were wondering. Wow, a white hammer. No, that is not a hammer, it's styrofoam, okay? But if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden a hammer flies through the air and hits you in the back of the head, and you turn around and Pastor Mike's standing <laughs> Pastor Mike! Why did you do that? <laughs> and then I walk up and I push you on the ground. And then I kick you in the back. Do you know what you're going to think? I don't think Pastor Mike likes me very much. I've seen see Pastor Mike. Do you know what you're going to think? Pastor Mike, I think you're my enemy. <gasps> Why would you say that about me? Well, you keep doing things that hurt me. If I hit you with a hammer, are you going to think I'm your friend? Come here, Aldwin. Oh. <laughs> What's the word hit? Mohampak? Dukul? Dukul? Kung dukul ni mo sa hammer? Huno na pagana. Oh, Pastor Mike, naigong mo siya na ko. Yeah, kung siya kong higala. Is that what you're gonna think? You think I'm your friend? No! You're gonna think, what's wrong, Pastor Mike? I thought he was my friend. He's, my, he's trying to hurt. He, Pastor Mike, you're my new enemy! When somebody repeatedly hurts you, they're not your friend. Leave up. This morning, I want to look at this passage we just read and kind of break it down. Gillette's gonna help me put some things on the board this morning because I want to help us understand these verses. I want to talk about the meaning of verses. We say makadaghan many times. I've read these verses many times, and and I've always struggled to fully understand because there's so many different truths in the verses, and it's hard to organize them. So I tried to lay them out. I don't normally have a lot of points. I'm ako mga mensahe dali ko wala ko daghan points. This morning I have six points because I want to lay the truth out very clearly from this verse. When, what it means to become your own enemy and what the results are and what the solution is. Number one, Gillette, if you write it on the board. All the way from Tao, just here this morning to write on the board for us. Here we go. Number one, it is possible for you to become your own enemy. Look at me in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. The Atsaka Agho, Nagatudlo, Niatung Manga, Nakik Sumpaki, Sailang Manga, Kavalingun. God commands his men, here he was talking to Timothy, see Paul, Naksula, Natani, Timothy, uh, first and second Timothy, Gisulatni, Paul, they're written by Paul, but they were written to a man named Timothy. And uh, God told Paul, I'm sorry, God, through Paul, was commanding Timothy, take the time to teach and instruct people who are fighting against their own selves. He said, Kinaanglan ka, mag, magtulo mo, sulay mo tabang sa mga tao nga nagsakit, nga nag, uh, 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 nag-away bato sa ilang kaugalingon. Nagsakit sila sa ilang kaugalingon. God is saying, Pastor, help the people who become their own enemy. Help the people who are hurting themselves. Listen to me what I'll say here this morning. When you choose to do what you know is wrong, you become your own enemy. Kung mag decision ka na maghimo sa mga butang, nga ikaw kabalong sa iyo, mahimong ka sa imong kabalingong kaaway. You are stealing 
your own joy. You are stealing your own peace. Kung tao maghimo sa decision, kabalo kong asalat ni, pero buhat tong gihapon, tungod nalingaw ko, what you find out when you do what you want to do, and you get over here, you find out, wala na kay kalinaw, wala na kay kalipay, you've stolen your own happiness and peace. And by the way, sin always steals joy and peace. Always, always, always. Kamoras ng mga tao sa kalimutan sila na sige si mahubog, maging mga droga, maging mga their cigarettes and their gambling. Why? They've lost their peace and their joy and they're trying to forget how unhappy they are. Nagsulit sila malibot kabayan sa ilang pagkamiserable. That's why they drink. Hey, that's why boys bury themselves in mobile legion. Mobile legion is like a drug for the brain. It helps you forget how unhappy you are. Ooh, it got really quiet about there, didn't it? And you know that's true. Facebook's the same way sometimes. YouTube can be the same way. TV watching can be the same way. Trying to forget my unhappiness. What's wrong? You're your own enemy. You stole your own joy. Nagawa ka sa imong kagulingon. Kalipay. Nagawa ka sa imong kagulingon. Kalinaw. When you become your own enemy, when you on purpose choose to do what you know is wrong, you hurt yourself and you hurt the people you love. You are your own enemy. Kung magbili ka, maghimo sa mga mata na sayo, bisan ka maluko, kabalok ka na sayo. Musikit ka sa imong kagulingon. Musikit ka sa mga tao na gigungan ni mo. Ikaw, iyo. You're hurting yourself. You listen to what I'm about to say right here. If you don't have joy today, it's not because of what someone else has done to you. It is because of what you have done to yourself. If you don't have peace today, it's not because of the situation of your life. It is because of the things you've done to yourself. We've got to stop blaming others. You listen to me. Someone else can hurt you, but they can't steal your joy if you have real joy. Amen. But when you sin, it steals your joy, doesn't it? Sometimes nagbati ka sa guilt, you have no joy. Sometimes na hadlok nga, what's word? Sakpan ka, sakpan ka. You're afraid you're gonna get caught. Walang kay kalipay, walang kay kalin. Now stressful ka ayo. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10, the heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Ang kasing kasing nagakaybalo sa yung kaguling ng kapait. Ogang uska lang yao wala naga pangin naga pangin labot sa iyang kalipay. You know that saying? Your bitterness or joy in life is not a result of what others do to you. It is a result of your own attitude and your own decisions. Ang imong kapait or imong kalipay sa kinabuhi. The liang result is a buhat sa uban. Result is a imong kawleon attitude o imong kawleon buhat. It is possible for you to become your own enemy. Fighting against yourself. I will never forget the day that I hit myself in the face with a hammer. I've had days when my boss hit me in the face with a hammer. I remember I was helping my boss. We were working, he's holding the hammer in his hand. And I glanced out and I got a bus with a wall. And I was looking through the wall like this. And as I'm looking through the wall, he had the hammer right here. And he decided to use the hammer. But the problem was my face was between him and the hammer. And I'm like this. And he went like this. Boom! Right there. Did you go up But, just kidding, we're good friends. But you know what's even worse than that? Is when you hit yourself in the face with the hammer. I was working. We were tearing apart a house. 
dili ang tibok balay pero nagtangtang mi daghang uh, decoration we're taking apart all the outside part of the house and I was pulling nails I mean nails this long big nails natangtang na ko I'm struggling I don't know how I did it but somehow I got that hammer twisted around and when the nail let go so then natangtang a nail I went bam like right that I was up on the ladder now who look who get comes the ladder I'm lit whoa Oh, when I do go, go hit pa. Okay, man. That wasn't the worst. The worst. When was that? I think it was that the summer after my freshman year of Bible college. Like Bible college, I go in the uli past the summer. I think it was that. Maybe it was my senior year. I don't remember for sure. But we were working on a garage. Now I took with me a garage and. I needed a ladder. Ten foot ladder. It was one of these kinds of ladders, you know. But you can fold it up and lean it against the wall. But it was leaning. What is lean? Like Sunday. So I walked over and I grabbed the ladder. It's ten feet tall. The Australian ladder. I'm not gonna, I'm sure 10 feet, that's 3 meters up here. And all of a sudden, oh, I can't describe it. I've never felt anything like it. sounded like a gunshot. Boom! Knocked me down, 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 And I'm looking, and I look over there on the ground. There's a big hammer, that long, sharp claw. It fell from the top of the ladder and hit me right here. I'm down on my hands and knees like this. The blood starts running down into my face. Now that's bad. That's not the worst thing. Here's the worst thing. That was the sixth time that summer I grabbed the ladder and the tool fell on my head or my shoulder, or my back. Screwdrivers, utility knives. My, my co-workers were very, very dangerous co-workers. They should have all been fired. But anyway, six times. See, Pastor Mike, why didn't you learn to look? I don't know, I was stupid. What can I say? But you know, Christians, we do the same thing all the time. It hurt. Oh, it hurt again. Why do I keep doing this? I don't want to do this anymore. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. Have you ever said that to yourself? Why do I keep doing this? You become your own enemy. Number two. Number one, it is possible for you to become your own enemy. Number two. When you become your own enemy, the devil can take you in his snare any time he wants. Look at me at verse 26. And that they, this is the people who are their own enemies that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him. Watch. At his will. At his will. When he wants to put them on. Aron ilang mapalengkawas ang ilang mga kaugulingon gikan sa litag sa yawa kinsa gipangbihag niya gipangbihag sa yawa diha sa iyang kabuton. Meaning, anytime he wants. Watch now. When you become your own enemy, the devil can make you a slave, a prisoner, a prisoner of war anytime he wants. That's what it says right there. Taken captive at his will. Look at it carefully. Look at it. Who are taken captive? When is the word are? Present or future? Are. Present. 
Karon. This is not talking about something that might happen. It's something that has already happened. Nahit na bona. Watch now. Listen to the statement I'm about to make. If you are constantly hurting yourself, you are a very easy target for the devil. Are you listening? Eldon, you get to be the devil this morning. Come here. Come on. You're the perfect fit. I'm sorry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Now, watch this here. If Alvin comes to me, he's not the devil yet. He'll be the devil later. He says, Pastor Mike, let's fight. And I say, okay, let's fight. We're going to fight. You ready? Wait a minute. He can take me prisoner anytime he wants because I'm hurting myself. Diba? What is that? Take me prisoner. Maka pabi hug? Maka preso shanako? Maka pabi hug shanako? Why? Because I'm my own enemy. It's not hard to beat me if I beat myself first. You say, Pastor Mike, that's stupid. Nobody would do that. Some Christians here probably do. Okay, I'll illustrate. Alright, you're the devil now. Are you ready? Where are your horns? Have you been practicing to be the devil? Because you're really good at it. Alright. Watch. Now here's the devil. And here's what some Christians do. Alright, devil, let's fight. But before we fight, first I'm going to listen to my worldly music. Una mamina ako sa akong kawal, akong kalibutan ko ng music. Are you listening? When you listen to worldly music, you become your own enemy. Are you listening? Una mamina ako sa akong worldly music. Dayon, magtanaw ko sa hugaw ng mga butang sa TV. After I get done listening to worldly music, I'm going to watch dirty things on the television. But then we're going to fight. Then we're going to fight. But before we fight, I, after I get done watching wicked things on the news, then I'm going to look at, then I'm going to disrespect my parents. How about his disrespect? I know they my respect, though, but. Will I put I want to disrespect my parents. And, or, or if I'm a grown, I'm married, I'm going to be unkind to my wife, or I'm going to be unkind to my husband. And then we're going to fight. Oh, and, and then, then I'm going to skip church anytime I want. My God, I'm going to skip church anytime I want. Because, okay, right? And, oh, of course, I'm going to pass the Bible. I'm going to pass the Bible. Do you know what you're doing? Let's fight. The devil's going to win. If you hit yourself with a hammer enough times, you can't fight anymore. Are you listening? Look at me. Upanin yung mga batano, malibog mo. Anam, anam man lang suit ko, masigisin mo. Masayo pa, just, I can't seem to win in the battle against the devil. What kind of music you been listening to? What kind of classes of music you pamino ni mo? Ang music sa anod or ang spirituano music? Huh? And by the way, just because they call it Christian doesn't make it Christian. Naidagang music, itaw a Christian, walay labot ni Jesus Christo. Nagi ang music nagi kan sa disco, pero sila nagtao Christian tungod nag naghiskot ni Jesus. Wala nila mo ni Jesus. If I hit myself with a hammer, and then I'm laying there on the ground, Sion Giles, yep, it's very easy for the devil to take me and drag me off as a prisoner. Are you listening? Have you become your own enemy? Are you hurting yourself? Thank you, devil. You did an excellent job. It could have been much worse. I could have made me be the devil in any way. Number one, it is possible for you to become your own enemy. Number two, when you become your own enemy, the devil can take you in his snare anytime he wants. You become a prisoner of the devil. Now, that doesn't mean you're not safe. Don't misunderstand me. It's like a prisoner of war. If I go, go to war and I get captured by the enemy, I'm still an American, but I'm captured. 
There's a lot of children of God who are under, who are captured by the devil, and they're living like they're not saved. Are you listening? They can't win. You ever feel like you just can't win? I try to do right, and every time I start, it's like I'm trapped. Like an animal is trapped, and I get up and I start to go, and then I fall back down. Why? Because when you are your own enemy, the devil can control you really easy. Number three, if you want to escape the snare of the devil, you must acknowledge the truth. Acknowledge is more than just, oh, I know it. It's accepting. Look back with me at verse 25 again. Everything I'm telling you comes from these two verses. Look at it. 2 Timothy 2.25. Amen. Come on, now get your Bibles open. 2 Timothy 2.25. I'll get a drink of water while y'all turn. Second Timothy 2.25. Kunana, say amen. There we go. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Listen to what I say right here. First you become your own enemy. Then you become a prisoner of the devil and of sin and by and of fear. Uh, what's the word? Bihak? Mabihaka. You become a prisoner. And then you're trapped. You're in the snare. And you feel like you can't get out. But if you want to get out, watch me now. As long as you're saying, I'm right, I have an excuse for the sins I've been doing, there's a reason for it, my situation's different, not quite alibi, not quite my own rason, watch now, as long as you're trying to convince yourself you're right, you have not yet acknowledged the truth. And you watch. You will never escape the snare of the devil until you acknowledge the truth. Put the, put the phone away, guys. Don't do that right now. You're distracting me, okay? Thank you. Watch me now. I'm, 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 I'm not mad. Listen to me. As long as you keep telling yourself, I'm right, you will always be a slave of sin and the devil. There must be a day when you say, God... You are right. I am wrong. Ang ako mga buha ang sayo. Your word is right. What I have done is wrong. I have no excuse. Wala koy alibi. Wala koy katarongan. It's hard word. Katarongan. Until you reach that point, you will always be a prisoner, a prisoner of war held by the devil. You will always lose every battle. You'll try to do right and you'll lose. And you'll maksula ka o mupakyas. O maksula na bot o mupakyas. What's the problem? You haven't acknowledged the truth yet. That your failure is your own fault. Hey, listen this morning. Whatever sin you've been hurting yourself with up here, you must acknowledge the truth down here about that sin. It is wrong. 
If it's worldly music, you must acknowledge the truth. Your music is not God's music. If it's dirty stuff on television, you're going to like, kao kao on the TV, or kao kao on the internet, or you're, you're looking at dirty, wicked stuff with the computer on, listen to me this morning, there's only way to escape it is to say, God, you're right, I'm wrong! Sakto God, sayuko! If you are unwilling to say that, you will never escape. Kundalik bot kamo sur di aqua ang kinahanga usbon. I'm the one who needs to change. If you're not willing to say that, you'll always be a prisoner. Number four. Number one, it is possible to become your own enemy. Hurt yourself. Number two, when you become your own enemy, the devil cannot take. I'm sorry, the devil can take you in his snare anytime he wants. If you want to escape the snare of the devil, you must acknowledge the truth. Number th- number four. If you want to escape the snare of the devil, you need God to change your heart. Look with me at the verse again. Look at verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. I want you to listen to me very carefully right now. I want to teach you something you may not understand. Listen to me. Every Christian at some point or another has backslidden. Ang tanang Christian ay panahon, usahay, sa una, nga nag-backslide sila. Let me teach you something about backslide you might not know. If you are backslidden, you have a heart problem. Ang problema, nasa mong kasing-kasing. Diba? Ang problema, what kulang ang tinguha sa pag-ino sa sakto, the desire to do wrong is greater than the desire to do right. You know what ba? Kanang problema sa backsliding. Right? Listen to the statement. If you are backslidden, you can't change your heart on your own. You need God's help. Mm-hmm. The problem is we try to change your own heart and then we get frustrated and discouraged and quit. Yeah, I just can't, I can't do it. Other people, the problem is you're trying to do it in the flesh. It is God who can give repentance. Repentance means change your heart and change your mind. Paginuso. It's not the way you get saved, but it is the way you get right with God. Well, I tell Maluas to an Akon Naginoso, Akon Sala, Pero Kung Delica Maginoso, Simon Sala, Delica Matar Muban Sajos. It's not the way of salvation, but it is the way to be right with God. But you watch. If your heart is cold and hard and dead, you can't change it in your flesh. Can I read you a verse we know very well? Let's look at it together. Jeremiah 17. Well-known verse, but most of us don't know verse. the next verse. Verse, verse 10. 17 verse 9. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. We know this verse, Kapulotani ain't in a verse. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Are you ready? In meekness, instructing those. I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong verse. I apologize. I'm about 2 Timothy. Jeremiah. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uncussing, cussing, malimbong on, labao sa tanangutan. Listen now. Your heart, by nature, is evil. Listen. My heart, by nature, is evil. That's what God said. And it says, who can know it? Meaning, you don't even fully understand your own heart. Well, I can knock the boots, I won't. Cutting, cutting, the kid book. Can I say it that way? You don't fully understand your own heart. 
Who can understand the heart? Look at verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. Who knows your heart? God. If your heart is wrong, who can change it? God. If your heart is cold, man, it's frustrating as a pastor. Oh, so hi. I'm a cousin cussing. I'm a boob now. And I get frustrated. Mike, what's wrong? Why is my heart cold today? I don't, I don't feel like going so in. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I just feel spiritually dead sometimes. You ever felt that way? Come on now. Yes, you have. Yes, we have. What's the problem? My heart is so deceitful. But God understands my heart. And when my heart gets cold, I need to get close to God. He's the one who can help me do right and give me that desire again. He's the one who can warm your heart. If your heart is cold, God can warm it up. Julie brings me salabat. I drink it, and then it gets cold. Kumbuk now now will let my garment. If it's not warm, it does not help my voice at all. Do you know what I say? Julie, can you heat this up? Now, I've, I've, I, Julie's a good cook, but I'm going to tell you something I've learned about Julie. She can't hook, heat up salabat. She can't. I said, Pastor Mike, she does it all the time. Oh, no, no, she, no, she doesn't. The fire under the pan does it. Are you listening? Are you listening? She has to get heat from the fire. She doesn't have her own heat. Hey, am I making sense to you? When your heart is cold, you have to go to the source of the fire. That's God. Yeah. He'll melt the ice in your heart. Just going to ask you a question. It's God who can change your heart and warm it up again. Not by putting a horn sign on Kino Excited, Kakabai and Smoke and to Josh, you are happy and excited about serving God. Man, you, you are thrilled to go soul winning. You loved listening to preaching in church on Sunday, and now your heart's cold. Listen, you can't change that heart on your own. God has to do it. So, what's the solution? Get close to God. Do all such os. And Josra. Naigahum sa pagosob sa imong dao tan kasing kasing. Magpabalik sa imong tingoha ng imong excitement kabayan sa pagalaga sa Jos. Listen, if you want to escape the snare of the devil, you need God's help. But how does God do it? Watch now, everybody look at me. How does God change our hearts when our hearts get cold and we 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 become our own enemy? That leads me to number five. We're about done this morning. Number five. God uses biblical instruction to change your heart and give you repentance. Ang Diyos mo gamit sa pagpahimang no, sa pagtudlo, Subay sa Biblia, gikan sa Biblia, sa pag-usob sa mong kasing-kasing, ng mga hatag ni mo, tinuod pag-hilusol. God uses biblical instruction to change your heart, give you repentance. Look at verse 25. 2 Timothy 2, verse 25. You got it? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to acknowledging the truth. Listen to what I about to say right here. When you fall, you sin, sin, sin up. And you're trapped. And the devil's got you. You listen to me. When that happens, the worst mistake you can make is to move away from the godly people in your life.
punalitag na ka sa yawa, ang pinaka makadawag na decision na mahimo ni mo. Most dangerous thing you can do is distance yourself from the godly people who can give you the instruction you need. The worst thing you can do when you start to backslide and you realize book now na akong kasing kasing ang pinaka makot decision the worst thing you can do is start avoiding and hiding from your pastor. Oh, my old uncle. But your pastor's the one who can help you. The worst thing you can do is start avoiding godly Christians. Do you know what you're doing? When you backslide, watch now. You backslide, you fall, na hulog ka, na tumba na. Ang yawa nag nag pabihag nag papriso na ni mo, and then you say, "I'm not going to church this Sunday." Do you know what you just did? You just stole God's opportunity to help you change your heart. Are you listening? Nagkawa ka sa oportunidad sa Joe sa pagchange sa imong kasing kasing. You limited God. The Bible says in the Old Testament, the children of Israel limited the Holy One of Israel. Israel. That's God. When you make a mistake, you listen to your pastor. You stay in church. When you commit the biggest sin of your life, and I hope you don't. Naglalaon ko magalikay ka sa mga sala, pero kung maghimok ka, God, kung sala, maulaw ka, nagbati ka sa ang joy, and you just feel so dirty and awful, you just think, the next service, you be in church. You need to be close to the man of God and the people of God so they can instruct you. Tungod ang Diyos mo gamit sa biblical instruction sa pag-change sa imong kasing-kasing. Are you listening? You need the preaching. Hey, hey, young people, you need the Sunday school lesson the teacher is going to give. You need it. You need it. Hey, I'm like, I'm so mad to look home, I'm cool and so I'm a mobile quality chase land. You need the Sunday school lesson. So number one, it is possible for you to become your own enemy. Number two, when you become your own enemy, the devil can take you in his snare anytime he wants. Number three, if you want to escape the snare of the devil, you must acknowledge the truth. Number four, if you want to escape the snare of the devil, you, you need God's help. Number four, five, God uses biblical instruction to change your heart and give you repentance. Number six, Only you can choose to escape the devil's snare. Ikaw lamang makahimos sa decision sa pag-ikya sa litag sa yawa. Say, wait a minute, Pastor Mike. I thought only God could change my heart. That's true. But look at verse 26. But now in verse 26. Kung nana, say amen. Wala pa na kluv ng mga Biblia. 2 Timothy 2.26 2 Timothy 2.26 That they may recover who? Themselves. Out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Ugaron ilang mapalingkawas ang ilang mga kaugalingon gikan sa litag sa yawa kinsang gipanghapbihag niya sa patiyang kamuton. He said, wait a minute, Pastor Mike. I thought you said only God could change my heart. God, only ang Diyos lang magkatawa na kung magigyas gikan sa yawa. Hold on, hold on. That's true. You need God's help. But listen. But God will not override your free will. Satan yung override. Binasayat mo patik babaw. Kinsa nagsawa mo patik babaw. 
means mag control overrule di ba listen here's what here's what i'm saying english una psycha do ha if you are caught in the devil's snare god will help you but he won't force you did you hear me ang jos mo tabang ni mo pero dili siya mo pukos ni mo i'll make a statement right here hey listen if you are trapped in sin today malit ang god ya sa sala it is not because god can't help you or won't help you it's because you choose to reject his help nag decision ka magdumili sa yang tabang God says here, they may recover themselves. Ilang mapalingkawas ang ilang mga kaugalingon. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Kinsa kabalo sa story prodigal son? Duwaka na kung usa ang manghud na 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 Panalundon. Panalundon is the, is the person, right? Panalundon. Inheritance. Hatay ko sa akong bahay sa Panalundon. Give me my part of the money. And his dad gave it to him. Amazing. I say, shut up. Go to bed. And he gave him the money. The Bible says he went far away. Nagbiyat siya sa ngamahan. Naglingaw-lingaw siya dito sa life na lugar. He went into deep sin. Nagapil siya sa tanang-lingaw-lingaw sa kalibutan. At the end of all the fun, na hurok na ang kwarta, niyabot na siya sa pig pen. Nainom na mo na, baboy yan. He's sitting there, gutom jud siya. Nagtanaw siya sa pagkapon sa baboy, naghunong na siya. Pasin ako, makakaon na na akong boss-boss, wala nagtanaw. That's what the word fain means. It means he was excited, waiting for the boss to leave so he could eat the pig food. Anybody ever eaten pig's food? Nagsulay ba? Sa bahay? Si Princess. Si Princess. Ah. <laughs> I mean, um, he's sitting there thinking, now look at me. Now listen to me. Whose fault was it that he was in the big pen? Yeah. Kang kinsang sayo, kang kinsang sayo, unsang raso na siya dito, yan gawin yung mga sayo. Diba? Stay with me. And listen to the words he said as he sat in the big pen, Naglingkot siya dito sa baboyan. Gutom siya. Hugaw kayo. Wala higala. Wala higwarta. Tungkol sa iyang kagaling ang sayo. And here's what he said. I will arise and go to my father. Ako mo barok. Ako mo tingbo. O mo lakaw. Nga ito sa akong amahan. He chose to escape. I will arise. Hey Christian, feel like you're trapped in some sin in your life. When are you going to decide I will arise? Ako mo barok. Karoon ka na ang decision. Ako mo barok. Nako yung tabang sa Diyos. Pinagin sa tabang sa Diyos. Ako mo barok. O mo barok sa akong amahan. I am not going to live trapped in sin. I will not spend the rest of my life living this way. Di ko magpadayo ni ini nga dalan. Sa akong tinotibo kinabuhi, ako mo barog. I will arise. I will not spend the rest of my life in the snare of the devil. I will arise. Not in my strength, but in God's strength. But I have to make the decision. I will arise. Pinagi sa tabang sa Diyos, I will arise. Ako mo barog o mag-start sa pagbasa akong Biblia, matagal lang. I will arise and read my Bible every day. I will arise and start memorizing the Word of God. Hey adults, the young people are memorizing. Adults should memorize too. I will arise and start walking with God. 
Maglakaw ko ang baroko, maglakaw ban sa Diyos. I will arise and become faithful to church every single service. Kung na'y pagsimba, ako mo pil. I will not continue in the snare of the devil. I will arise. I will arise and delete my wicked music from my cell phone. Ako mo baro, o mo delete sa tanan hugaw ng music, ikan sa akong cell phone. Di ko kinala mo passport ni mo sa hugaw ng music, kabalon na ka. I will arise and stop watching garbage on the television. Ako mo baro, delete na ko mo tanan sa hugaw sa TV. Ako mo baro, delete na ko mang mang ibog sa mga uh, uh, images sa screen. I will arise and give up my angry spirit. I will arise and burn my dirty romance novels. Unchristian will I love with the gambling. Ugang tanan fighting cocks connect, deconnect there's a gambling. I don't know how to say that right. We have no business being involved in gambling, so why do we have fighting cocks? Sell them. They're expensive, Pastor Mike. Then sell them. But again, nah. I will arise. How about this one? I will arise and walk away from my wicked, ungodly barcada. I will arise and go to my father. Are you tired of living a trapped life? Oh, we're not just talking about vices. It could be so many other little things. Why don't you decide, I will arise. I will I'm going back to my father. I will arise. Have you become your own enemy? I just feel trapped. I just I try to do right and then I just fall again. No, mama, matumba diapon. You need to arise. Would you just decide today? I will arise today. See, that's the problem. The pastor says, Do right! And you say, Next week. When will you arise and say, Today's the day I begin to escape? Not tomorrow, not next week, not pohon pohon. Today, I will arise. When every head bowed, every eye closed.